Salam from the People's Dispatch Studios in New Delhi. I am Siddhant Ani and we are talking today about uh, the very unfortunate news coming in of the death of veteran investigative journalist Andrew Jennings at the age of 78 after a brief and sudden illness. Uh, his death is uh, a loss to all of us who have been engaged in journalism, particularly those of us who have been engaged in sports journalism and covering uh, politics in sport or the politics of sport. And, uh, corruption in sport. He was in many ways a, a path breaker of the field. I read now a short bit from an obituary written by a close collaborator and colleague of, of uh, Jennings, Jens Anderson, who runs the organization uh, playthegame.org. Uh, he writes, and I quote, a journalistic pioneer whose work was crucial for uncovering the culture of corruption in world sport for almost 25 years. Andrew Jennings set new and higher standards for journalistic coverage of sports politics. Uh, joining me on this uh, show today are NewsClick uh, sports editor Leslie Xavier and uh, senior sports journalist with the Times of India, one of the largest English language dailies in the world, uh, Siddharth Saxena. Good to have you both on the show from various places. Hope you're safe and, and all right. Uh, very unfortunate circumstances bringing us together uh, this evening. Uh, guys, Siddharth, I'd like to come to you first. Uh, you have collaborated with him on some projects for the Times of India uh, way back in 2007, you were saying. Uh, give us a sense of the kind of work, the scale of work and, and the impact of work of Andrew Jennings' work. Andrew Jennings was a lone wolf, if, 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 if you look at it in, 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 in one sense, right? He, he uh, was a pain in the backside for a lot of these uh, high and mighty sports officials and, 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 and uh, administrators all across the world. He, uh, he, he riled him no end. And I guess that's the, the, that's the real uh, essence or, 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 or uh, reason for being a journalist. Uh, like I was saying earlier that uh, uh, when you joined journalism in the, in, in the early 90s, uh, they asked you what you read, the seniors would ask you. And since you were kind of too starry-eyed when you, when you joined because uh, a couple they would call on the landline and you know and those kind of things you know as and they would say we uh, read and, and and if you said like i said beyond a boundary they would uh, you know okay they would not if you said fever pitch they say okay this guy is, is probably reading he likes to read and he likes to understand the the the, the human side of of sports fandom and they would ask you then they would ask you that uh, have you read lord of the rings this is before the 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 movie or the franchise was was, was game ninety five, right? and you probably say no most of the time. Lord of the Rings was not was not the kind of stuff you would read as a sports fan, but but it was it was essential reading in a sense. You know, then they would say, okay, go to the British Library, pick it up, and you find it, and read it. And that's when you realize that Andrew Jennings, like I said, was a lone wolf. He he he. Uh, he investigated stuff because he wanted the truth to be out. And he realized that there was a huge culture of, of very convenient give and take in the, the, the highest corridors of sporting power where, where people ruled it like, like they feed them. Mm. And he took it upon himself to, 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 to unearth all of that. And in doing so, he may have made a lot of enemies in the higher places, but he, he kind of gained a cult uh, following amongst independent journalists, uh, 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 journalists who, who, who saw sport, who, who wanted to see sport not just for the, uh, within the parameters of, of the boundary line or, or, or the ring, but, but, but beyond that, what, what made it run, who ran it, how did it have so much money? You know, it, it can never be so straight and simple when, when, when sport becomes a, a globalized uh, commodity, you know. So in that sense, mm. he realized that there's things to be found out. So mm. yes, Andrew Jennings is going is, is, is a big loss, especially in a time when uh, uh, journalism, sports journalism, investigative sports journalism is has taken a beating in a sense. In a in a because all the big uh, big powers are kind of collaborating themselves to keep the truth under wraps. Yeah, very much uh, in that sense, like any other major. Uh, global industry and particularly in this case, I suppose, very similar to the entertainment industry as it were. Uh, Siddharth, you also were saying that you had the opportunity to actually interact with 
uh, Jennings to to engage with him, to see him speak perhaps, and he had this very engaging way of of communicating uh, to back up, like you said, you know, all the numbers and the facts and the hard data that 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 was there in his work. Uh, give us a sense of of his persona and and how he communicated and and put his message across, his story across. You mentioned uh, play the uh, play the game dot org, which which I think is one of the last uh, uh, bastions of of where where you were trying striving to protect uh, journalistic integrity and, and trying to dig out truth. This is this is a this is a workshop as I was told when I was in the Hindustan Times uh, in two thousand. There's a workshop for sports in 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 in, in Denmark. Would you want to go and attend? I said, obviously, yeah. Mm. Freezing winter, but still. And that's where you you landed, and 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 uh, Anderson was there, James was there, and he was the uh, brains behind it, and 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 he was like, it was like people from all across the world, like-minded people, uh, all uh, ethnically different, but with a similar uh, bent of mind to to uh, disturb. The status quo, as it were, to understand what 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 was actually wrong in sports, because definitely the, there were things wrong in, in sport. There was doping. There was there was there was corruption. There was bribery. There was there was, I mean, you know. So uh, uh, this was a, a three-day uh, symposium, which, which is a very successful thing now. And I think it was in the second or third edition when when we went in two thousand. And uh, for someone as uh, new as me. Uh, first trip abroad, looking up, finding all these all these names you had read about, and, and there here they were, mingling with you, having a drink with you, uh, sharing a coffee, and when when it came to to business, talking business, Andrew Jennings literally owned the house. You know, he was this flamboyant guy who was storytelling in a way, but pulling no punch. I mean, uh, he just he just he just went all out, and then at that time his favorite. Punching bag was uh, Yon Ant- Antonio Samaran. She was the uh, IOC president, who he had no bones mm. in, in uh, highlighting repeatedly that he was aligned with uh, General Franco during the Spanish uh, uh, civil war. Yeah, those days, and uh, and that's how he got the plum post of the IOC and, and the Barcelona Olympics stuff like that, and and how he unearthed the whole thing. So it was his, his baby, the way he told it. And we were floored. So I remember the next morning, uh, I caught him at breakfast. The second session had started, and he didn't seem to, you know, uh, perturb that he was missing out on the other talk speakers. But he, he was sitting with this guy from India, and I, I wanted to know. But, you know, he had he had a very interesting he had interesting insight, or the extent of insight that he had was interesting about how the Indian system worked, because they right. they kind of fed off. What the, uh, the 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 people in, in Switzerland, you know, uh, 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 gave out in that sense. Right. So if when uh, once the Olympics Lord of the Rings saga in a sense was over, when he had two other books following that, he turned his attention to uh, FIFA, hmm. and that's where it got really entertaining and and, and really I mean, everybody uh, you know the world uh, sat up and took notice. Uh, Blatter. Tried to get the book banned across the world. Obviously, it won't succeed. You know, uh, uh, we all probably uh, ordered advanced copies of it here. And when Blatter came to India on the, on on this, like I said, a PR heavy uh, trip in 2007, I thought it was it it would be interesting to just kind of lay out with uh, Andrew's uh, collaboration, of course, and with his help, uh, of course. The real picture of what Blatter INC, if, if if one can call that, which is FIFA, is all about, you know, given the constraints of uh, finite space in the newspaper, maybe what seven hundred mm-hmm. words at the most. <laughs> so 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 Blatter came. It was it was a huge thing. I think the biggest thing in Indian football in recent times is is not Maradona's coming or Messi's coming to to India. It is it is, it is Seb, Seb Blatter's coming to India. I mean, we 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 pulled out all the stops, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> sorry, I remember this former Indian uh, captain who didn't show up for uh, Maradona's visit hmm. a year two year, a year later 
but he was there mm. for uh, for for bladders thing and he said asked, yeah so I asked him why didn't you go for madder which is a more organic idea to do you know it's the most spontaneous mm. idea the greatest footballer is coming he said no but mm. that guy was the fifa president right so india needs mm. him right he said okay fine mm. so this is how the, the the thing should go fine mm. so mm. we uh, so i decided to do an interview apart from a couple of other stories i just did a interview with uh, uh, with andrew on the book Right. Book is foul, foul. You know how uh, uh, on FIFA it's called foul. Mm. And in, in typical Andrew plain speak, a very smart uh, editor on the desk gave the headline: Blatter has no interest in India. And here mm. was Blatter, you know, from, almost riding the proverbial elephant here mm. in India. Because remember, he came to Calcutta, and the first thing he says is, "I'm a salesman of football." Mm. I'm a I'm a grand old salesman of football. I mean, so I said, okay, fine. Let's see what it really it really entails. And then the day he landed, or two days later, here was this interview in the Times of India. I think it was published all edition. And there was this uh, press conference scheduled for the uh, last leg of his tour, which is in Delhi, which was in Delhi, in the uh, All India Football Federation headquarters. The mm. uh, president and the secretary all were there. Four were uh, Blatter's men. And I wasn't. Finally, I wasn't able to attend that press conference, though I really so badly wanted to. Mm. But uh, someone tells me, people tell me that uh, yeah, that he waved the uh, copy of the Times of India, saying, "I'm going to sue this guy. I'm going to sue this guy. This is this is this is pure vendetta and stuff like that." Mm. So those were those mm. little uh, cheap thrills one got with working with with Andrew. But when I told yeah. Andrew this. He was he he said but you know he hasn't uh, he didn't say anything there were so many mm. questions to him so he hasn't given out anything so you know in in that sense we've done this episode but we haven't really gotten forward with trying to nail black yeah yeah so just later all those most of those allegations were proven true mm. there's a different um, uh there's a change of guard at, at fifa now who rules fifa who controls fifa that's for another andrew jennings to probably absolutely absolutely and 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 all, i think of late uh, very recently i think fraud charges have finally been uh, leveled uh, and and things like that so 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 yeah perhaps in in that sense what happens next and 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 uh, where where the scenario is currently at with not just fifa but also the ioc uh will require another andrew jennings uh, which is a good sort of uh, time to bring leslie in leslie you you're uh, leading a small team at an independent news website uh, news click how challenging is it to pursue investigative stories or, or let's not even go there uh, just at the very basic level uh, with access as tightly controlled as it is today to sport particularly elite level sport uh how how difficult is is it to continue to do your basic work as a sports journalist as a reporter uh while also trying to like siddharth was saying uh, andrew jennings did through his life speak power to truth so uh, jennings in that sense probably set a uh, i mean the ground rules of engagement so to speak if, if free journalists have to take on the powers how they have to collaborate across the world and connect with each other and uh, guard 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 each other even and uh, mm. then also collaborate exchanging ideas information Uh, leads uh and then what has happened is now that another set of blatters and all these officials have taken over control it's it's very clear the same thing happens in india uh, um, mm. uh, happens in india it happens across the world in, in almost all the countries where big sport is run and sport is run as a business so mm. uh when we look at specifically at news click where uh, and with the team that we have all like minded journalists who would like to be critical of things that happen around uh, try and bring out news that nobody else touches because it has clearly from the from the 2000s the sports journalism the world of sports journalism has clearly shifted from uh, sport per se and into a highly pr driven uh, enterprise uh, what when siddharth was saying mention what he mentioned blatter's visit to india was a pre pr driven exercise that was pretty new for india to see because till then we also add some level of sanctity as far as sport and organizational sport events and all these things are concerned 
we looked at sport a, a little differently now that visit and now fast forward to 2022 that was in 2007 and football has drastically changed the way the way it's run in the country we we understand we 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 at newsly try to cover indian football with with that in mind where mm. the evolution of indian football has taken a direction which is not exactly healthy for the sport in the country and that is a voice that is not brought out in any of the publications that cover football football in the country nobody does that the sort of introduction that you gave to blatters that 2007 visit where he was saying i am the salesman uh, of of this sport uh, it pretty much uh, some sums it up because uh, over at the next 5 or 10 years what has essentially happened is that uh, in many ways b- bits and pieces of indian football have been chopped up and sold uh, without any of us even realizing that there was a, a market in this or something that we wanted to buy yeah <laughs> but but more uh, than buy sold more than buy sold yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah so yeah, absolutely I don't, sold. Know, i don't know who's buying it but but, but oh, it's, it's Ruth, definitely being sold it's, uh, yeah yeah definitely i think uh, jennings would have had a, a lot uh, i don't know how much attention he might have paid to it but he would definitely have had a lot to say about uh, how things are progressing in this country with with uh, the league structure and how club competitions are held and and how that feeds into like you were saying uh, but, much uh, bigger uh, sort of yeah you know sidan but what lesley said is is true you know the access right now is, is so much more difficult you know at some mm. level it just it, it's not rocket science at some level it just might be so is so simple and so easy that it it could surprise you but but if you see the layers of layers of 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 access that that are mm. you know, required to be broken mm. that itself is so exhausting at some level you know so That's probably in jennings's time uh, it it wasn't it it was rather more more amateurish to uh, you know to uh, to be broken down in a sense if, if you know what i'm trying to say you know it, mm-hmm. it was it was you know simpler probably you know the the yeah. people in part didn't realize that they would be up for scrutiny you know mm. in very mm. in a very uh, street wise street smart street wise way oh. which, which yeah. uh, jennings did very well you know he he would provoke he would he would go and he would go and eat you know That's... but but he would have documents he would he would always have the facts with him Everything. like i said his, yeah, his, his basic his basic tenets were networking not like mm. what we do in india you know mm. over over cocktails no and mm. and research you know so mm. by, by networking he meant find out the other aggrieved party find yeah. out the next simple meaning journalist find out what mm. he knows find out the mm. the person who has a grudge in, within the organization mm. see uh, cultivate him see what he knows so that was his modus operandi that's how he kind of uh, uh built his his is his vast uh, uh, list of contacts and sources and and uh, you know those and yes documents research get the documents get the not many people uh, it, see it's very sad that um, no big newspaper or or, or or website or channel has has carried uh, his his passing uh, mm-hmm. i was checking it is probably one of the least uh, trending name uh, terms or hashtags as you, as you say uh, over the mm. past week, though it could have been so much bigger given uh, given the extent of social media there is only one so called you know almost underground cult working to 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 remember him like probably we are doing now which which just mm. shows us how much uh, uh, hand in glove the the establishment is you know at, at the uh, top heights of power absolutely how much, uh, yeah. how much of a problem he was you know because they, yeah. they feared him so much so much yeah and and this this is a confluence of big tech big media uh, and and of course uh, you know the entertainment uh, industry uh, so yeah com- completely wide ranging sort of scenario uh, we are almost out of time again uh, sorry uh, lesley we haven't been able to get you in too much uh, but i will uh, ask you uh, before before we leave you both E and maybe Lesley, you can go first. Uh, if you can recommend for those of us who might be unfamiliar with Jennings's work, uh, a, a a book or or uh, any part of his work that impacted you personally the most. No, I, I, for me, for for any aspiring journalist, and I happen to I mean, sometimes interact with uh, with young 
journalist, student journalist also uh, in, in webinars and all these things. So in fact, two days back, the day Jennings died, I was, I was in a webinar at an university. And uh, I, without knowing, I mean, that Jennings is no more, I, I, I was talking some of Jennings's ideas, thoughts about how to cover sport. What, what what to bring out, what to look out for. It's not just about results or medals or things like that. So in, in general, it's not just about his books, but the, but the, but the, uh, the quality of work, the ideals of work that he, that he put in place to, uh, uh, to ensure that, like Siddharth mentioned earlier, truth comes out. And we, after all, journalists are seekers of truth that way, to bring it out into the public domain. Having said that, Jennings is also the reason how sports administrators and sport business and the stakeholders in sport have evolved and closed their rank. It's, hmm. I mean, Jennings' uh, entry into FIFA investigations and the long list of it, it, uh, it started off with him riling him up at a press conference asking him, have you ever taken a bribe? Hmm. Two weeks later, apparently a source from FIFA contacted him and from there it started. It's not hmm. easy anymore because what has the, what the establishment has done of late is that they have set up uh, their own men. It's it's everybody has their hand in the cookie jar and nobody is willing to. Nobody is aggrieved in the system. Uh, mm. Mostly, if you look at the Indian Football Federation, for instance, elections have not been held for the last two years. I mean, it's due, and nobody is. I mean, yeah, maybe some some grudges are there here and there, but nobody is willing to stand up because everybody gets their due one way or the other, and so they are all happy. So this that kind of closing of the ranks has happened. And also the various layers that the business of sport has set, the PR driven mm-hmm. mechanisms where uh, for a journalist, for a young journalist to break into covering big sport, he or she mm-hmm. needs to needs to compromise some things. And the companies that they work for also insist that they need to compromise. So it's 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 a much more complex web to break now. And that challenge, I mean, we need to accept to probably do justice to someone like Jennings who, who has done so much and that would be his true legacy. So uh, for me, uh, my recommendation to anyone for that matter, not just not just sports journalists for that matter, is to is to understand that it, it, it's also to evolve because that's what Jennings was. He evolved as a journalist through his career mm-hmm. and he ensured that he is, he is up to up to speed with what is happening around and catch them. So so that's that's the biggest lesson I carry with myself, and probably we all should. All right, uh, Siddharth, if if you can, you mentioned, of course, that uh, uh, the early and sort of defining work, Lord of the Rings. But but apart from that, anything else that you, of course, uh, I mean, there's so much. I guess all of his work uh, is something that we should read. So maybe I'll ask you a different question, Siddharth. Do you think, uh, taking off from what Leslie was saying, uh, do you think that actually? some impact has also been had in terms of a basic level of transparency when it comes to sports governance we sh- uh, we keep hoping it does but 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 you have the loda committee uh, in recommendations which are kind of being overturned with, with such impunity you know you go mm. back to court and, and they're not being uh, implemented like they should so 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 you know one one really begins to think that uh, do you do you do these things and then and then what happens because, like Leslie pointed out, that they close ranks very quickly. They 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 they, they devise methods, they devise ways, they they they, 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 they know loopholes, how to hang on to power. You know, mm. I mean, you have these uh, recommendations for uh, corruption in the biggest sport in in in, uh, in India, which which probably in terms of eyeballs and appeal uh, rivals global football. You know, given mm. the sheer numbers, and mm. those people have just not. Given it, any yeah. So, mm. so, so, India is the hotbed of uh, of doping in in sport. You know, there will be so much investigation. There've been, there've been, uh, there have been investigations on match fixing. There have been uh, uh, stings on match fixing, but they all get mm. buried. You know, they just get swept under the carpet. Any, any, any attempt to uh, legit. Uh, uh, properly find out a way to get out of those things or, or to, to correct those measures, they they just get uh, clamped over. Mm. So, you know, I mean, my thing, my uh, 
suggestion or advice or, or feeling would be that for a young journalist, he shouldn't be too enamored by the uh, glitz or, or, or the, the idea of somebody calling the shots. You know, mm. you should be able to probably question them or try mm. to just take a step back always. Always take a step back and understand why is something is happening, which is happening with such, you know, mechanized smoothness. Obviously, there's something else. Mm. You know, what's oiling it? You know? yeah. Fine. Yeah. You love the game. You watch the game. You 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 can marvel at enjoy the puns. game you can do yeah, all of that the yeah he, the new age idea that he brings but also at the same time look at the other things which are happening you know mm. Mm. i don't know whether a big I, newspaper with its commercial interests and and the other interests affords that kind that. of a, yeah liberty but but that's mm. one cost but if you know mm. so you can draw a balance on that Absolutely. But Absolutely. enjoy the game. I, I, it's as we, we like to say uh, on our other show, uh, Siddharth, that we are, we are all uh, playthings of alien forces. And that's something that I think I think we should all uh, remember at all times. And, and also keep the, keep the hope, keep the faith, guys. Uh, keep at it. Thank you very much, both of you, for your time. Uh, and uh, remembering, once again, uh, the pioneering investigative sports journalist, Andrew Jennings who passed away recently at the age of 78 and all the work he did. Hopefully, you have access to some of that work and get a chance to read some of it if you haven't already. Also, do check out, like the guys were mentioning, uh, playthegame.org, uh, an organization that is doing its bit to, to promote democracy, transparency, uh, and generally good governance uh, across sport and around the world. Uh, this has been... Uh, an offering from People's Dispatch for more on these stories and I mean more on on this and all the, all of the other work you do we do. You can visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and our sister website newsclick.in. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.